Welcome to Little Lectures, making learning and teaching easy for residents and students on the go. Join our residents from the University of Louisville as they share the highest yield internal medicine topics in digestible chunks. So my name is Bree Trishan and I'm a third year med peds resident and today I'm going to be talking to you about advanced care planning. So our learning objectives today are to define what is advanced care planning, what is an advanced directive, and how do we sit down and actually talk to patients about these things. And so the AAHPN has a consensus statement surrounding advanced care planning, and it's a process that supports adults at any age or stage of health in understanding and sharing their personal values, life goals, and preferences regarding future medical care. The goal of advanced care planning is to help ensure that people receive medical care that's consistent with their values, goals, and preferences during serious and chronic illnesses. So it's something that all adults should be thinking about, um, and it's really something that when patients are in clinic, in the hospital, anytime during their care, that if we think that it's appropriate to sit down and have a conversation about advanced care planning, we should be doing as their providers. When we talk about advanced care planning, we also wanna know what is an advanced directive. So this is a document that your doctor and family are made aware of um, that lets them know what type of care you might want should you become seriously ill and lose the ability to make decisions for yourself in the future. There's different forms of advanced directives. You'll hear a lot of different terms that are all synonymous with each other, uh, such as a healthcare surrogate, so this is designating someone to make healthcare decisions for you uh, when you're no longer able or don't have decisional capacity. Other terms that you'll hear that are, are synonymous with a healthcare surrogate include power of attorney, healthcare agent, healthcare proxy, healthcare representative, healthcare attorney in fact. It's important for patients to have conversations with that person that they designate as their healthcare surrogate so that they actually know that this is someone that's been appointed to make decisions on that person's behalf when they can't make decisions for themselves. Other forms of advanced directive include a living will or a treatment directive. This specifies healthcare wishes and it's only in effect if a patient is unable to communicate the wishes themselves. This includes things like life prolonging treatment, artificial nutrition or fluids, anything that surrounds a patient's medical care and future medical decisions. Other forms include five wishes. This is a specific type of advanced directive um, that patients can fill out that documents how they want to be cared for at the end of their life. It asks five wishes. Wish one is the person that I want to make care decisions for me when I can't. Wish two, the kind of medical treatment I want or don't want. Wish three, how comfortable I want to be. Wish four, how I want people to treat me. Wish five, what I want my loved ones to know. And all of these questions all help direct what the patient's future care should be. There is a $5 cost that's associated with completing this type of form. But really, when we think about what those five wishes are, they can be applied to any patient when you're having an advanced care planning session and they don't necessarily need to fill out this form, but just kind of think about what those wishes are and how that would direct the patient's care. There are specific state forms that are a standing order set. Here in Kentucky, we have the MOST form, which stands for the Medical Orders for Scope of Treatment. Indiana has a POST form, um, which is the Physician Orders for Scope of Treatment. This is an actual order set that follows a patient anywhere that they go. And so patients should have multiple copies of this form. When you're filling out the MOST form, as you can see that there are multiple sections um, that need to be filled out, although only section A is a necessary section on this form, which includes CPR, whether a patient wants to attempt CPR or do not attempt CPR. Patients need multiple copies of this form filled out. You can't just make a photocopy, but it's good for them to post this above the bed, on the fridge, in the patient's chart, and just make sure that they have a copy of this wherever they go. 
The point of a most form is to provide a mechanism to communicate patient preferences for end-of-life treatment. Usually this form's only filled out in the last year of life, um, and it's a good idea to update this form if things are to change. This includes resuscitation status, life-sustaining treatment preferences, treatment preferences including the use of antibiotics in feeding. One of the things to keep in mind when we're talking to patients about advanced care planning is that it must be voluntary and so ensure that you're obtaining informed consent from a patient. It's also really important to document what patients are talking to you about when you have an advanced care planning session, including the fact that this is a voluntary discussion, a brief account of the discussion, explanation of advanced directives, and if a form was completed. Although you don't have to complete a form, it's good to just talk about these things with your patients. It's important to include who was present, and it's best to actually name names. So this person's aunt was there, their son, their wife, um, and then other team members that were present, including um, any nurses or medical students that were in the room as well. And then how long did you uh, spend with the patient talking about advanced care planning? So now that we've talked about what advanced directives are and what advanced care planning is, how do you actually do it? It's important to set the stage. So you want to try to find a quiet space, gather the people that need to be there, and really sit down and talk about what you need to talk about. Sometimes it can be really hard to start the conversation, so it's good to start with open-ended questions, like what do you understand about your health and your current diagnoses? What have the doctors told you about what's going on right now? It's also important to clarify values, so find out what's important to the patient, what do they value most? understanding what their goals are, so what your patient thinks their treatment goal should be. Is it important to find a cure or is it important to maximize symptom management? Try to clarify their wishes and conclusions and then summarize everything that you've talked about with your patients. As you understand the current conversation, your patient thinks that they want full treatment at this time, or your patient thinks that they want more comfort-focused care. It's important to summarize what you just discussed with your patient. Um, for example, you can talk to your patient if we've just had a change in their code status. As I understand right now, if your heart were to stop beating, you would not want chest compressions. You would not want to be put on a ventilator and rephrase it into a way that your patient understands what you're talking about in terms that they can understand. At the end of the conversation, after you've summarized, ask if there's anything else that they need to talk about right now, or if there's any other people that would be important to be involved in this conversation. Again, after the meeting, it's important to document everything that you just talked about so that there's a record if there's going to be future conversations, what's already been discussed and who it's been discussed with. So some of the things that I hope that you can take away from this are that advanced care planning is an individualized process for each patient and it's really a conversation. Um, you can't just sit down and go through a form that's the same exact uh, process for each patient. Everyone's individual. It's important that you document what kind of conversations you had and if a form was completed. And then if you are going to complete a form, especially uh, having one of the state forms like the most form or post form are important to document in the patient record. And with the most and post forms, it's really important to complete multiple copies of that form as that is not something that can just be photocopied. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening and learning with us. If you would like more information on this topic, please take a look at our full-size Louisville Lectures, either on louisvillelectures.org, on our YouTube channel, or on our podcast.